Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me in the locker room today. I'm Alan Locker. I hope you're ready for an unforgettable episode this afternoon with the iconic Deirdre Hall, beloved for her portrayal of Dr. Dr. Marlena Evans on Days of Our Lives, a role she has played since 1976. Deirdre's legacy in television history is unparalleled, having appeared in over 5,000 episodes of Days of Our Lives, a feat unmatched by any other performer. She's not just a daytime star, she's a, also a trailblazer, being the first person to star in both a daytime and primetime series with her role in NBC's Our House. Her impact transcends the soap world. She broke new ground for daytime stars when she guest starred on shows such as Ellen, The Tonight Show, Night of 100 Stars, and more. Her journey as a mother is equally inspiring, having welcomed both of her sons via surrogate, a groundbreaking decision at the time, which earned her a segment on 2020 and the cover of People Magazine. It is such a pleasure to welcome Deirdre Hall to the locker room. Hi, Deirdre. Al Alan, Alan, are, should we tell them what we've been through just to get together? <laughs> we, we can. <laughs> we, we had some technical difficulties. We, we had uh, uh, Lee Foch, my assistant, and we had the NBC representative on the line, and I was on the line downstairs, upstairs, on my phone, on my computer. It's a miracle we're here at all. So <laughs> it, it is, but I can tell you, yours. I can tell you they are very excited that you're here. Um, I don't know if you had seen this, but you and I met decades ago when I was a page at ABC TV and you appeared on Regis and Kathy Lee. Look at our uh, hair. <laughs> and here we are again. They said it wouldn't happen, but oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, and, and I've got to tell you happen. as well, which is really quite funny. We, we uh, not funny, but we had a earthquake in New Jersey, a 4.8 this morning. I know it's and, all over the news out here. And a friend said Marlena had something to do with that. <laughs> that would be Hattie. Hattie, that would be one of Hattie's. <laughs> I think there, I, there you I, go. Hattie comes and goes, and recently I, 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 I um, what did I, what did Hattie do? She, she uh, cast a spell on everybody for something, for some injustice she had experienced. So maybe, <laughs> sorry about that, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, and I got to tell you what else I loved. I there was a uh, post on X this week. Susan Hayes posted it. It said, Gal Pals cruising Cali to the music of Gal Pal Patty Weaver. And there you were with Judy Evans and Susan singing and driving. I, and I mean, Amy. yeah, uh, beautiful. It was so beautiful. How How is Susan doing? Susan, um, you know what? Susan is a miracle. She's amazing and she carries on. And, and I, I can't even begin to imagine the level of grief that she lives with. Um, or or Judy for that matter. I mean, it's it's uh, they oh, both had some very hard turns. Um, but uh, we had a rocking day that day, and, and as we do, because I see Susan several times a week, just because we're great friends. Um, and uh, yeah, we had a great time. I've got to look at that video now. Oh, you do, you do. It was adorable. And I will come back to days of our lives. But I is it true that you set out to be a psychologist and not an actress? I was studying psychology and in 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 college and um, and I was supporting college by by modeling, and then I had a, an agent that said, "Well, you know, you make more money if you you know if you do commercials." Okay, well, I'll do that. And then she said, "Well, you you can make more money if you try acting." Okay, I'll do that. And then I then I did a, a show where Barry Sullivan had a monologue um, that I messed up because I ended up in the background, not knowing that I was in the background of the shot. And I said to myself, you know, even if this is just for fun and to make money for school, um, I can't mess up somebody else's job. So I got into acting classes and I spent, you know, the next 12 years in, in all kinds of, you know, movement and improv and Stella Adler's master class and, and studied everything that I could possibly fit into my schedule. So that's, I fell into it. I know people hate hearing that, but I did fall into but, it. But it's incredible. And I love like you were doing it to just make money. Um, what was it about psychology that uh, set you on that path? I, I just, I, fascination with, with people and their behavior and, and their motivation, just like everybody else. I think we're interesting human beings. Well, and, and it's very funny in hosting the show, the amount of actors I've talked to who have 
studied that as well. Like it's just a weird connection between actors and that profession. Well, we're studying human emotion. I mean, if if we're doing our job, we're we're kind of we're digging pretty deep. Yeah, it it, it really really is uh, fascinating. I I'm curious, who are some of your mentors over the years along the way who helped your path? My mentors, my mentors. What now? Tell me what that means. Uh, like people that I a, admire, a people teacher, that... a teacher, or somebody who's helped just guide your, you know, somebody you look up to, somebody who's helped along the way you know I, i'll tell you and uh, um i've told susan this so it's not a tale out of school but when when she and and uh and billy were getting married on the show and they you know obviously it's a enormous moment for days of our lives and bill and susan got married um and and the parking lot had filled up with fans that had been allowed to come in and and they put up huge monitors so everybody could see the wedding it was enormous and of course, the church was full of of, of the you know the appropriate actors, and uh, and, and at one point, she turned and said to everybody, "I know this is taking a long time. We really appreciate your help." And I thought, "Oh my word! She's in the middle of carrying a huge, huge moment in daytime. She's with a man she loves, doing a you know doing a reenactment of their of their their marriage." And is concerned about the fans in the parking lot. So I just I thought there's so much grace there. There's so much wisdom and and and, and empathy uh, in the middle of caring an enormous moment. That uh, Susan Hayes is a hero of mine. I and, and see, seeing her behave that well, it was just uh, was just an example of of of, of a good of a good. Um, I was going to say performer. She's a good example of all of it. A, a good human, but it's and it's so lucky to witness something like that so early in your, you know, beginning there because it, I think it just leads leads you know helps you lead, you know. After well, there, that. you know, in 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 those in those days, we had um, McDonald Carey and Francis Reed, as you know, and um, uh, you just didn't come on stage unprepared. Uh, uh, it, it was not acceptable to, to, uh, you know, to, to come out and kind of wing it. Um, and, uh, on, on, you know, Mac and Francis's stage, you behaved well, you showed up on time, you showed up prepared, you, you know, you helped your fellow actors and, and, um, uh, it was a, it was a tone that came from the very top. And, and then, yeah. and Bill and Susan are the ones that carried on that, that legendary good behavior. I love that. I love that. I mean, you set out to to play a psychologist in real life and then ended up, you know, since 1976 playing Dr. Marlena Evans. Is yeah. that irony lost on you? Like it's it's wild. Never lost on me. Never <laughs> lost on me. In fact, I when I began playing her, I had no idea what therapy was sort of all about. And I just and I thought, I know. I'll play the person that everybody wants to see when they go to see a therapist. And uh, apparently it was pretty close to what people wanted to see. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but your first daytime role was on The Young and the Restless in 1973 as Barbara Anderson. And if I'm not mistaken, you were on the very first episode. I of was. Lionel? I was. Yeah. Right. Now, what do you remember about that and, and working for Bill Bell? Um, uh, 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 Barbara Anderson was a, a, a nurse that worked with Brad Elliott and, um, I don't, it's been a few years, been a few years now, <laughs> um, but, but she, she, um, um, they had a child. I could be making this up. They had a child. The child died. He wasn't able to save the child and, and he, he was distraught. He ran from the scene. He jumped in his car. He ran from town and, um, was in picked up a hitchhiker and uh, uh, and then was in a terrible car crash. And uh, so he somehow took the identity, I'm thinking, of the of the other passenger in the car. Because um, that sounded all right. I don't know. The I fans will tell right. me. If, the fans will tell us if they, because I'm sure they remember oh, more than- This was an easy many, many, many years ago. Yeah. Um, and and I, uh, it was my first time doing a soap and I just thought, 
wow, these people get to come back every day and, and um, they, you know, they, they sort of work as a team. And I said to my agent, if you get a soap opera, I, I, you know, I'm available. What? I said, I, I like that. I like the sense of family and belonging and that you, you know, no matter how, how, how well or how not well it goes at any particular day, you get to come back and, and do it again. And uh, uh, I, I love it. I love the people that I work with. I love the camaraderie. I love the caring everybody has. Um, and Alan, you obviously realize that everyone does, that there's not a, a set that large that doesn't have a certain number of great joys and great tragedies. And watching these people pull together, really pull together uh, to help each other through hard times behind the cameras is just uh, so touching to me. And I, and I, it's my family. It's my family. I love that. I love that. I can see it in your smile. Um, ben Benjamin said, you, "Basically, you are right on on that on that story." Um, I Who's did. Benjamin, are you reading something that I'm not seeing? Yeah, I'm seeing some oh, comments. Okay. That the fans okay. are. The fans are, and some fans sent me messages, um, and I wanted to read a couple. Kevin said, "Over 40 years ago, when I was a little guy at daycare, I saw days twice a day when my babysitter watched it." on TV during our nap time. And when my parents watched it on the VCR after work, I've been watching ever since and have never known life without Deirdre. Can't wait for this interview. Um, oh, my word. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you're here. I'm <laughs> glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. You know, and we hear that, Alan, you know, from, from when I do public appearances, we yeah. have multi-generational uh, little groups show up, the, the mother, the grandmother, the great-grandmother, the child, the, because they've all watched it together and been introduced by, by their family. A absolutely. Another Alan says, Hall is one of those rare actresses who has chemistry with anyone they put her with and acts from the heart, so worthy of an Emmy. I have often wondered at what point she decided not to submit. And was that a choice you made not to submit? Oh, that's a tough question because, you know, obviously I would love to have an Emmy. Um, it seems like you spend enough time doing it that <laughs> they should just give you one for showing up. Absolutely. Um, um, the, the few times- Over 5,000 I... episodes, yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, you know, in the years that I didn't have much uh, to submit, uh, I was nominated or uh, when I did have uh, shows that I thought were, were good submissions, you know, I didn't get the nomination. So it's I don't know. It's uh, there's, there's lots of rumors about how that doesn't doesn't yeah. happen. And it doesn't yeah. matter because, uh, I, you know, having a long winning job that I adore for all these years is uh, plenty. Thanks. <laughs> um, Mandy, I'll read one more. Mandy said. Uh, reminder set about today's interview. Wouldn't miss this interview for the world. Deirdre was such a part of my childhood growing up from so shows such as Our House to Days, and she's still entertaining me and millions of others as Dr. Evans all around the world. She is truly one of a kind. Well, wow, Our House was, was uh, oh, wow, that was a phenomenon for me. And I I, uh, I don't know if you know that I did, I, I had auditioned for Our House because NBC was doing it. And uh, then I, I wanted it so badly and got the job. And, and I was doing both uh, days and our house. I would come in to days on Saturday and, and shoot my scenes for, uh, for days and then wow. go to the set, obviously all week with our house. And uh, after a year, they said, you know, it just doesn't, doesn't make financial sense to come in every Saturday just to do your scenes. So, um, and then, uh, and then we didn't, we didn't continue. We only went two seasons. So that was a, uh, Anyway, oh, I love hilarious. that show. Oh, I love that show. Oh, well, I, we'll, we'll definitely come back to that. I love that. I love that. Um, I, you know, fans, many fans commenting here, you know, have watched you since your days, you know, as a lecturer woman. Um, you shared a really funny story with Digest a few years ago about how you would run to, to another set. Um, to get warmed up. Would you share that? <laughs> Wait, run to another. Oh, 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 oh. I think you're talking about um, our, uh, 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 talking about Electro Woman and Dinah Girl. Is that what you mean? Yeah, when you, yeah. the set was really cold or hot. We, we worked, we worked on the stage. I mean, it was, uh, 
never mind that part. Um, we worked on a <laughs> stage that uh, that was uh, was hot, and um, uh, and right next door uh, they did Donnie and Marie, and they had a uh, an ice skating rink that they had to keep the studio cold to keep the ice rink frozen, and so we would we would sneak over, open the elephant doors, and. <laughs> steal as much of their cold air as we could just to just to kind of cool off it was you know dead of summer and we had these latex cotton latex whatever they were costumes on and and we were all body and mic so the, the microphone is wrapped around our bodies and it's pinned here and, and you you know you couldn't get out of it to get cooled off for a second so yeah 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 we used to steal we used to steal air from donnie and marie i love yeah. that and jane elliott you mentioned jane too. elliott played cleopatra Oh In fact, God, Jane brought her, her ice skates to uh, to work one day to skate next door. <laughs> the, the, I don't think I they ever that. knew that, but oh well. <laughs> um, you turned down Marlena at first. That that yeah, and I love the reason too. The the reason is funny. See, the, the preface is actors are just so crazy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I had um, I had I, I got the audition and I had uh, screen tested with some amazing women, just just legendary women, uh, a few of which were already in daytime. And uh, my agent called and he said, "Well, you got the job." I thought, "Nah, if they took me when all those women were available, they all must have turned it down first. So I don't want a job nobody else wants. There's something wrong with this job that I don't know about. And and apparently they then went to New York and, and tested in New York and then uh, came back and my agent called me again. He said, "What? They're they're calling you back. What, what's what's going on? Why don't you want to do the part?" And I explained it to him. He said, "Oh, you were so crazy. You were their first choice. You were their first choice. You were always their first choice." <laughs> so I, I think ready? people need to say All that. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> people need to say that to you so you know that right actors are just well actors are crazy we all know that <laughs> well you know last year you celebrated over five thousand episodes when you somebody must have come and told you that what what does that mean to you i mean that's so incredible to think of how much time you've put into this show i mean i know you know you can say it in years that's a lot of episodes of television. It's a lot of work. I, and I guess what, what occurred to me at the time was, uh, oh, there must have been somebody else. There must be somebody else. But then um, even news programs, I'm, news program is five days a week. A talk show is five days a week. Uh, the View that I adore is, is five days a week. There are so many strip me, shows. Me too. Me too, Deirdre. I love The View. <laughs> oh, isn't it great? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Love those names. Um, but, but they haven't been on for 40 years. So, so even if I'm not working every single day, uh, there, there's an enormous span of years and, uh, and shows. So I, I was, uh, I was quite astonished to be a person who had reached that benchmark. And, and, and the number just can, continues to grow. They keep, they haven't figured that out yet. They keep having me back. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Best that place number goes up. I love and, it. And you know, it's it's working with the same people. That's what I think. That's the secret to keeping a show on the air, is that um, uh, you know, th there's been chatter about they bring in young actors and we have to train them, which is which is it sounds like it's a negative, but um, if you haven't experienced sweet cameras uh, uh, in the past in your career, it's it's a it's an art form and you have to learn. Don't step into my light. Don't step into my camera. Use a downstage hand. Don't slam that bottle on the bar. I mean, there's so much that has to be learned by by somebody who's new to this, um, and and we do. You know, we we pull those young people in and we we just train them up. And it's it's how I learned, you know, um, and it's how it's how everybody else learns. It's it's a great oh, and I don't like it when people say a great learning ground because go do your craft and learn your craft uh, you know, before you come on mm -hmm. this stage. But but it's a good training ground. It's good. And they come back, whatever happens, come back the next day and do it again. We're not done with you yet. Well, and you said it earlier. I mean, they are your family, but to all the viewers, 
you are their family as well. Like we tune into daytime because of the family connection. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's what these shows are built around is, is that theme of family. You know, Alan, I know you know this, but, but there is a, a, an enormous effort every year um, uh, to produce holiday shows um, when we have the Horton Christmas mornings, but because we're so aware that for many, many people, we are their holiday. We are their Christmas morning. We are their Thanksgiving table. We are their, you know, their ha Halloween, whatever it is. We, we are the ones that they come to, um, to have that holiday and they look forward to it. And so days will always have uh, special holiday episodes, Christmas and Thanksgiving and, and, um, you know, we'll always have young characters and, and they're brought in by uh, what we call the veteran characters. So we introduce them and we and we present them to you and, and show them uh, the way and show you who they are. It's how we take care of each other and our audience. I uh, love that. Uh, Jody says, Horton Christmas guaranteed to make me cry a river every year. <laughs> we'll be there for you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember your first days on set? Was there someone who, you know, speaking of um, learning, was there somebody who took you under their wing and, and showed you the ropes in Salem? Um, um, one of my first days on the show, uh, I had a scene with Mac and Francis, uh, uh, um, uh, Tom and Alice, and uh, uh, the character of Amanda. And... Uh, uh, Mary Fran, who was a great, great beauty and um, adored her, um, played Amanda. And so I've been standing in the wings and I've been watching their scene and watching their scene. And he was saying, uh, uh, you know, Amanda, Amanda. And um, so I entered the scene and, and Mac, McDonald, Carey, Tom introduced me as, as Dr. Evans. I'd like you to meet. And I said, oh, no, 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 please just call me Amanda. <laughs> and I thought. Gosh, it's so quiet. What's going on here? Why is everybody yeah. so quiet? Somebody else must be up. And so I waited and, and, and in a moment, and Max said, darling, she's Amanda. You're Marlena. <laughs> yeah. They gently remind you who they are. Uh, I love that. I think I heard you also say Jed Allen was uh, quite helpful in those early days, too. He knew it. He knew it. He 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 knew the ropes. Obviously, he's a veteran actor, um, and was hugely helpful. Um, uh, just in just in probably a thousand ways, you know, because I would follow his lead, and um, uh, if there was something that I didn't understand, he would sort of explain it. Or what is overlapping? Are we overlapping? What does that mean? Okay, fine. Um, uh, yeah, and Jim, hold yeah. that look. Oh, hold yeah. that look. Um, and speaking of, of gems, uh, we're having a number of people coming back to the show in the next uh, few weeks for episodes that we're doing. And um, uh, Gloria Loring is going to be coming back. Maybe I oh, shouldn't be wow. Well, anyway, yeah. Well, and, and I'll say it because he said it on my show last week, I think last week, Stephen Schnetzer as well. Yep. <laughs> oh, you're going you're gonna to be uh, uh, deeply moved by who you see in the next, in the, the shows we're shooting coming up. Uh, that's um, awesome. Fan, yeah, they, fans, they've reached way back. Fans will love that. What do you remember about um, the first time you were told that they were going to possess Marlena? Um, who told you? What was your immediate reaction? We had been um, experiencing a lot of strange things in Salem. Uh, 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 Christmas trees bursting at flames, packages, Christmas package things happening, and and it was just uh, a mystery. We, you know, as the actor, you you play it, and then later you understand what it was. And before, uh, um, I think it might have been the Christmas break. I don't recall. Um, Tom Lang, who was our producer at the time, called me upstairs and he said we need to talk to you. And of course, <laughs> flop sweat. Um, <laughs> And um, uh, Jim Ronnie was our head writer, who was just an absolute genius and a devout Catholic. And um, <laughs> I think Jim was on the phone 
and 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 they explained that you know all these things that are happening in Salem. Why yes, it's you. What do you mean it's me? It's you. You're doing it. Why what what how what? <laughs> um, uh, it's because you're possessed by the devil. And I thought, wow, we're around the bed now. <laughs> I'm what I am. And, and uh, he said, yeah, yeah, we're going to have you possessed by the devil. And, um, and it's, it's more, we think effective because it's Marlena. You know, if you had a, 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 a secondary character uh, having it happen, but the fact that it's Marlena um, is really going to just just mesmerize people. Okay, and the only the only uh, request that I had was that that we we really step up to it, that we do it um, properly. We don't uh, short out on it. We don't cheap out on it. That we you know if we're if we're going to do it, let's just really really do it. And um, uh, what I can what I can tell you is that the the first levitation that we did, um, I actually levitated off the bed, and I'm I've signed contracts. I can't tell you how it happened, but we brought in a whole team um, that was responsible for such stunts and oh, uh, cleared the stage, and uh, um, uh, and I levitated. I love that. You yeah, know, it, was it, good. it was good. You know, in daytime, you know, I could say in sci-fi, like there are things you do in sci-fi that don't really happen in real life. Um, being possessed doesn't happen in real life. How do you prepare to be possessed as an actor? Um, I will share with you that I, I have a deep and abiding belief in God. And those scenes uh, concerned me uh, to a degree that... Uh, before we did all those scenes, um, uh, my leading man and I would pray before the scenes. Oh wow! Just for protection and understanding and compassion, and um, uh, just cover ourselves in God's light. So, yeah, we took. Well, it I was, yeah, I could see that because you know that's scary. You know, for having your faith and having your beliefs, and then having to portray that. There's mm -hmm. you know conflicting things. I would think. Yeah. I also, um, uh, Ken Corday had sent over, uh, I think he'd been to Israel. I can't, I'm, I'm, I'll misspeak now, but had sent over a, a gorgeous crucifix and um, some holy water <laughs> and uh, some prayer beads. And, and um, we all used the holy water before we did those scenes. And I, and I kept the uh, crucifix with me at all times. I love that. Too much information. Um, yeah. Well, there it is. And interesting to me, and 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 I was heartened to see when I when I had the holy water on stage. Um, uh, I would say I brought the holy water out with anybody, and a large portion of our crew said, "Yes, I'll I'll I'll, I'll take a drop. I'll take it." Yeah. So, they I, believe I, me. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I hear that. Uh, your first romantic pairing was with Jed Allen. What do you remember about that time? And and experiencing a you know soap couple that became popular well as i've said alan he, he just was a consummate professional and and knew his way around a stage and around a character we we um we were um uh invited to do a location shoot which is completely rare in daytime because there's no money for it um uh but that we were taken to um carmel on location at one point and um, it, it, this must happen to Bill and Susan all the time because I, uh, while we were up there, we were shooting on the street and, you know, in shops. And, and so we were, you know, there's always a little bit of a crowd around when you're, when you're doing that. And um, I thought, wow, they like us. They really like us. It was just so <laughs> fascinating to be in the, you know, in, in the public eye and having people just, just thrilled to, to, to watch it happen. That was, that was great fun. And you were, you guys were on the cover of Digest. Again and again, yeah. And TV oh. Guide. Oh, you're, I, I think I'm seeing on my monitor, you're showing a picture of Wayne Northrup and myself. Is that right? Oh, all right. Yeah, this one is, yes. But this was Jed Allen. There's, okay. I can't quite see it, but I, yeah. I can sort of see it. Uh, yeah. Cr crazy. So speaking of, you know, Shoot from the hip when I mention your co-stars. What comes to mind? One word, two words, three words. Wayne Northrop. 
crazy ass. He's just <laughs> a crazy ass. He is so hilarious, so irreverent, one of the funniest people I've ever known. And um, and had, I, I won't say no regard. I will say little regard for anything that preempted him doing a joke. Um, I remember doing a, a, a Christmas scene with him where he comes into, uh, he's been undercover somewhere. And so he comes home and he's got a trench coat, it's, it's whatever. Um, and he steps in and I step away and I said, I'm just, I can't believe you're here. I can't believe you're here. And he said, I can't believe there. And he throws his trench coat open and he has got Christmas ornaments completely <laughs> covering the inside of his trench coat. You can't use that take. Take the coat off, get the ornaments taken off, but you know, just completely irreverent. There was a moment when um, uh, he was sleeping in Johnny's bed to keep me from safe. And um, so it was a joke because at a moment he has to run quickly from one set and jump into Johnny's, Johnny and my son's uh, bed in the, in the next moment. And so I said my, to my prop man, can you get me a, like a, a, a container of hot water? Yeah, okay. So everybody knew what was happening. So I put hot water in the bed like Johnny had wet the bed. Um, and we all kind of, I stood off camera and, and waited. And so he ran and jumped into the bed and we all thought, yeah, he's wet. That's funny. And they called cut. He jumped out of that bed, came after me. I ran so hard. People trying to stop him and got all the way to my dressing room and tried to shut the door, couldn't shut the door. And he pushed me fully clothed into my shower. Had to redo my makeup, had to redo my clothes, had to redo my hair. That's that's the irreverence. I mean, that's the, because um, uh, that's, you know, gosh, I love that man so much. Um, uh, well, but, and, you know, humor makes the day better, doesn't it? It does. It does. And and then not knowing what to expect from him also was a, was a, a fun way to act. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Drake Hogeston. But he's got a ranch up. He, you know, he's married to Lynn Herring, who plays yeah. Lucy Glow on General Hospital. And um, my my kids and I have been up to their ranch in, in Raymond, um, having a great time. He's a cowboy. Let's be clear. He's a cowboy. I love that. I wanted to tell you, the minute you said Gloria Loring, the fans all just kept writing, yay, 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 yay. So they're yeah. all very excited. I hope I didn't jump that gun. I'm uh, Andrea, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. I just yes, blurted Andrea. that out. <laughs> yeah. And Gloria and I were on location many years ago uh, up in um, Ridge Ridgecrest. We, we were on location there for some reason. I, I was having a baby or she was having a baby or something. But yeah, yeah. Drake Hogeston. He's delicious. He's just delicious. He's, you know, his, his professionalism comes from baseball and he just never hits a stage without being completely prepared. Um, and as, you know, I've laughed at him, as we're getting the blocking for the scene, blocking is somebody tells you where to stand, where to move. And um, he'll be fiercely writing down his moves and then he'll write down my moves and then he'll write down everything that has to happen that scene. Drake is written down. And so I just, I just, you know, play along. I, I glide along and I'll say, oh, so do I cross to the T set here? He said, no, it's the next line. Okay. <laughs> so um, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a ball player, start to finish, lovely man, devoted husband, devoted father. I, he's my hero. And, uh, oh. um, and he, I, I, I've often said that, you know, working with Drake is like working with a safety net. He's always there. He's always got it. That's you wanted two words that. or less. Sorry, that didn't happen. <laughs> no, I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Joe Mascolo. Joe, um, once again, this is like Francis Reed. Joe um, didn't have an accent. I didn't know that until, I don't know, where I saw him years later. And I thought, oh, he was doing a, a, a guest spot somewhere. And I thought, why is he using that accent? Why is he? Oh, wait. Maybe Stefano has the accent. So yeah, Joe and his accent. Never broke. He got out of his car in the morning, put the accent on, and until he was in his car at night, didn't take it off. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I love know. that. <laughs> that is truly amazing. And he, and he, he, he loved Marlena and chased her. And a, a, a friend of mine used to say, you know, it, it's like, a, it's like a, a dog chasing a parked car. What's he going to do when he gets her? We don't know. He's put her in a gold cage. He's, he's held her captive. He's this, he's that. But, you know, never caught her. I love that. I borrowed this from your website. You and Judy Evans. 
Oh, my heart. Well, you, you we were just we were together a couple of days ago. We went we went shopping over on our little uh, shopping street in North Hollywood and having lunch. And uh, yeah, she is. Uh, she, you know, Judy. Um, besides having an, an extraordinary career in, in daytime, also uh, uh, had had a, a lovely history of, of the circus. You know that? Yeah, I do. I grew up. Oh. I grew up watching Judy on Guiding Light. That's where I fell in love with her. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. She is as kind and loving a person as as there is. She just is is there. It's just she shows up and shows up hundred percent. A huge heart. Huge heart. What? The late Frances Reed. Never who you thought she was. She was not in that kitchen making donuts, boy. She was crusty, saucy. Um, <laughs> uh, she could swear with the best of them. Not that she did, but she was she was capable. Um, and once again, uh, didn't didn't suffer fools. You know, don't Ooh. show up on that stage with Francis and not be completely on your game. Love that. Uh, the late McDonald Carey. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Um, many, many, many years ago, he was having a treatment for, I think, arthritis that left him with a, 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 a scent. And uh, uh, he insisted on having his makeup done in the parking lot because he didn't want to have people around, you know, that all sounds so terrible. Oh, lovely, gracious man. I'll leave it there. <laughs> hey, he was looking out for everyone else. But truly. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. I, I love and, that. And just years ago, the way he said, no, darling, she's uh, she's Amanda. You're Marlena. Sweetest. And, and the late John Aniston. Never met a joke he didn't like. <laughs> I, I know you know that about him. He, you no you seem what. like you had a lot of jokesters on, on the set oh, there. But you know what? Yeah. John, um, uh, I, I don't think I ever saw him that he didn't say, hey, D. Did you hear the one about, he always had a fresh joke every single day and they were always wonderful and they were clean and they were, they were topical. He was, yeah. Uh, and besides being a, a lovely, dedicated actor, always prepared. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. A real, a, a real gem. Yeah. I've, 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 everyone who I've talked to has said that. Um, and all the fans, you know, want to hear your memories of Bill Hayes. And, and I did get to spend uh, an hour with Bill and Susan on this show, and they were amazing to talk to. Amazing. So I'd love any memories of Bill you'd you'd like to share. Wow, he just um, uh, uh, he he he's a, 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 a activist. I mean, very active in his church active in his community, um, uh, there for all of his children. He had a gaggle of kids and grandkids and always there, um, just just available. He he was available to everyone for any reason. Um, mm. I said to him once, and I think I may have said this before, but I, I said, uh, how, how does it work? Having been married my share of times, um, how, how, do you, um, how do you make marriage work? And what he said was, you know, Susan has never given me an insincere kiss. I thought those two people loved on such a profound, deep, uh, a sustaining level that um, it was just, it was full. It was rich and deep and profound. It, when so, I spoke to them, I, yes. I, when I spoke to them, I felt that, and I didn't know them. I didn't grow up on days. So you know, just seeing them together. Um, anybody who wants to see what true love is should watch that interview because just, just you know, the bounce off each other, the the way they talked about each other, they sang to each other on the show. Like it was just really a delight, an absolute delight. Um, and and world travel together, you know, just amazing trips around around the globe together and sharing that experience. And And they're both, wildly bright and and uh, uh and and educated in so many different uh, uh areas that they're fascinating to talk to yeah I, I loved it what was it like growing up with a twin sister your twin sister andrea um did you two play jokes on people and stuff like that 
we weren't that clever. Um, <laughs> we, um, you know, and and what I'll say, Alan, is it's it's that's all I knew was growing up as a twin. So I I didn't um I didn't know anything um other. What I will say about it is that the the great you know the, the expression you can't step into the same stream twice. You can't step into the same place. Um, uh, family that has you have an older brother, that's a different family. Or if you have no siblings, that's a different family. Um, but I had an identical twin, two minutes apart, um, and so we stepped into that same stream. And our parents were at the same place in their lives and and their success. Um, uh, it was a it was a, a, an enormous sharing of everything. Um, at one point, because we have a little bit of a mind melt thing that happens. Um, I'd gone home from my dad's retirement party, and I'd come in from California. She was coming in from somewhere else. She flew in the house. Says, we got to get changed. We got to go. And she said, "Did you get?" I said, "Yes, it didn't work." And she kept going. And my mom said, "Oh." I hate it when you do that. What was that conversation? What conversation? She said, what happened? I said, oh, she was asking about a leash that she sent me about two months ago that had a single handle with two uh, a dog uh, hooks on it so you could walk two dogs. So Annie came in and my mom said, what did you ask Dee when you came in? And she said, oh, I was asking her about a leash that I sent her about. That is so funny. I it's love never that. a noun in our conversation. You know, we just, we don't have to finish sentences. Um, and we tend to um, do things without knowing it. We, we and On that same day, we walked in to uh, leave for the, um, the my dad's retirement party. And we walked in, in in the same outfit, unplanned, undiscussed, a white three-piece vested pantsuit. Come on. What is that? You know? Um, so, the, so they we, they say that the the twin connection. I mean, it really, yeah, incredible. We're both, we're both uh, have picked up our a passion for knitting lately. So we're doing a lot of talking about knitting, but no surprise together. Uh, I love that. That's incredible. Um, and, and what was it like having the opportunity to work with her? Um, ooh, you know, it was different because she was a special education teacher. <laughs> and I had said, to her that friend, I know. I, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I said, you know, the time may come when you may be asked to. She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, get into a little theater group, get into something. No, 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 no. So uh, uh, I was talking to Ann Marcus, who had wrote our show at one point, who was a dream. And one of her questions upon meeting with a few uh, of the actors was, is there anything you'd like to do that you've never had the chance to do? And I said, oh. I think I'd like to work with my twin sister. And Anne being very wise said, what? You've got a twin sister? <laughs> um, and they flew her out, put her on camera, went, holy moly, that's it. We're doing it. Bought her out of her, uh, her existing contract to teach. Um, and uh, and w she brought her great Dane with her and and she moved into my house and we lived together and worked together and, and uh, uh there was one moment where, where she was, I think I've told this story before, but she was giving testimony in her own sanity hearing. And uh, uh, and I said to her, look, there's a funny thing about this, and we've all been through it. Um, when you get to the point and you, and you think you want to cry, and you've cried in the car, and you've cried in your dressing room, and you've cried at home, when it doesn't happen, don't go boo-hoo and put your face in your hands. Just move on without crying. And I, I said, well, yeah. Okay, but when you can't, don't boohoo. She said, "Oh, I can do it." <laughs> so I was standing uh, in the wings just to make sure she was okay, and I'll be darned if she didn't cry like a baby. And I thought, "Wait a minute! This took me years to be able to do. I could never do it on camera. I could never do it on cue." And I said, uh, "How did you do that?" And she said, "Well, I've been watching you do it for years. How hard could that be?" And I hadn't shared with her how hard it was for me. So she didn't know it was hard. That that I that was my next question. So I'm so glad you shared it. But I didn't realize how the role came about. That is fascinating that you just were asked anything you'd like to do. And then, you know, they, they brought her out to do it. Oh, there you are. You're back. Okay. Yeah, they brought her out to do it. I, I love that. I didn't realize that's how it came to be. 
It, yeah. I mean, she, it, she it, was an extraordinary teacher. Not that she wouldn't have been, but she, you know, uh, my brother has Downs, and so we we were raised with being in tuned and being sensitive and being careful of what was going on around him and how to keep him safe and um, and his feelings safe mostly. Um, uh, and she she brought all of that empathy to her career and uh, was the first person ever to take a group of special ed students out of the state to, to Special Olympics and wow. pulled it together, got families along the way, had everybody's permission, took like eight kids to the Special Olympics across a straight line, and they had the time of their lives. Oh, That's how beautiful. Yeah. And what an, I, I, you know, it didn't dawn on me. I, I, I knew about your brother. It didn't dawn on me just the connection, but like what honor of being a special ed teacher, you know, to your brother. Yeah, you know, yeah. No, she wasn't teaching him, but an honor that that's the career path she chose. Yeah, there was a time when we we he he was home for Christmas and we we came out for Christmas morning and Annie and I were there, and uh, he came out and looked at the tree and we were all so excited because of course it was you know all about him at that point, and he looked at the tree and left the room, and we all just sat there and thought oh oh no we missed something we missed something there's something that we missed, and uh, so sent Annie obviously into you know what went wrong and uh, she came back and said um he wanted um a tricycle a, a large adult-sized tricycle um but he told santa <laughs> <laughs> okay santa didn't tell us so you know and so i said what she said i just told him oh santa had to leave it at the store because it was too big to put in the sleigh so we'll pick it up on monday okay That's she knew she knew how to get to him. I mean, amazing work that she's doing. You know, that's it's. I I don't know how I I did that when I was in school. Like I, I think I helped the special ed teacher. I don't recall how I got involved, but I remember in uh, elementary school being working with the special ed class. But I don't remember how. You know. Wow. We, we had a class, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing work. Um, what are some of your favorite story, you know, 5,000 episodes? What are some of, you know, the highlights for you? You know, oddly, you've, you've hit, you've hit so many of them. Obviously working with my twin sister was, was a, a, a was just a, a, a joy living with her and, and working with her. And, I mean, it's like college. <laughs> yeah. And also the shameful part is that it allowed her to pay off her college loan that she never would have been able to do living on a teacher's salary. So, uh, you know, come on, America, we can do better than this. Wait, a absolutely. Um, but what a what a nice gift, too. That was what a nice gift. Yeah, but what a nice gift. pay our teachers what they what they're worth, because they are the gateway to our children's futures. And, you know, one misstep or one great step, you know. Everybody has, I think, a memory of, a, a, of their favorite teacher that somehow saw them in a moment and understood something that they were struggling with and went, here, I got this one. So let's let's take care of our teachers anyway. Um, gal, we've hit uh, 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 Jed. We've hit uh, Wayne. Uh, we did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've hit Possession. Well, we've <laughs> well let, let's and, talk, you know, fans. One, one thing about the show that, that I think – gives us a huge advantage is that we're family owned and run. Um, uh, Ken Corday uh, has inherited the show from his parents. And um, uh, and so we're not, I was going to say we're not corporately run, but we're run by a human being that cares enormously about the show and about us and about it and our success and uh, cares about the integrity of the show because it's his inheritance, it's his family. And uh, I think that gives us a great advantage. And I think viewers feel that too. It's again, it's that you, you just said it, it's that family, you know, he's continuing that legacy and, and, you know, the audience has continued that legacy from, you know, their grandmother or their mother to their daughter, you know, and, and it just keeps being passed down. So it really is that same movement. Yeah. 
and Ken always makes sure we have all those all those uh, categories. We always have new young love stories. We always have a stable adult couple. Um, we always have we have some kind of turmoil. We have something topical all the time. So it's you can't catch us where we're not looking on that show. Absolutely. What you know, the fans have followed. You know, as I said, I mean, from Electra Woman to Days of Our Lives to Our House. They have stuck with you for all of these years. What is it like when, you know, to have that? Um, and, and also how, you know, for you now, it's changed so much. You know, when, when you started, it was snail mail. <laughs> and, oh. <laughs> you yes. know, now it's, yeah. it, you really hear from them so instantaneously. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, my assistant Lee Futch is, is, is brilliant about staying on top of, um, things that need to be done and people that have, you know, I was gonna say special needs, which sounds wrong, but but um, uh, uh, she's great at helping me post things and and uh, uh, and staying in touch with you know with the fans on a much closer level. Um, snail mail. I used to, yeah. <laughs> I, I met a wonderful man uh, through the mail uh, uh, when I was first on the show. I met a man from Chester, Pennsylvania. The fans know this story. Um, uh, who lived in Chester, Pennsylvania, and wrote me a lovely letter. And he was an illustrator for the Saturday Evening Post. And uh, when he turned 97 years old, um, I was in Philadelphia doing, a, a, I think, the Mike Douglas show, and uh, uh, drove, took the train down to meet him and spend the afternoon with him. So anyway, that, one of the lovely advantages of getting to to uh, have a very special fan and, and had had that amazing relationship. That wasn't yeah. your question. What was your question? No, no, that 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 is phenomenal. Um, 1993, you starred opposite Peter Bergman in Woman on the Ledge with an array of daytime talent: Colleen Zank, Leslie Charlson, Michael Zaslow. What are your memories of that? I don't know if I have any. Um. I, you know, we all work the same because we all, all work at a, at a break. I know it must have been so int right. The the fact that you all came from daytime, it must have been a piece yeah. of cake. <laughs> yeah, we. I think we've all heard that from time to time if we're doing a Hallmark movie or whatever, saying, "Oh my gosh, you just first take every time. You people are amazing to work with," and and it's true. Daytime people are just extraordinary in, in terms of the ability to get a product on the screen immediately. Wow. Uh, I did want to read, somebody wrote a beautiful thing. He had just come across our chat. And I might have missed it. Let's see. If I find it, I'll share it. I think I missed it. I don't know where it went. <laughs> um, you were one of the first women to go public with your surrogacy in 1992 when you were pregnant with your son, David. I have so many friends who have been blessed with beautiful children through the power of surrogacy. Um, what was it like sharing your story at a time? I mean, you really, you know, that was at a time where it wasn't like it is here in 2024. You, yeah. I mean, you must have helped so many women when you, you know, here you are, uh, you know, on the cover of people um, sharing that and, I just can imagine that so many people probably were introduced to it for the first time because of you. Well, um, I, you may think back, because not now thirty years, but um, think back. By the way, you said when you when I was pregnant, which I wasn't. Um, yeah, uh, sorry. Yes. No, no, it's okay. Just to yeah. clarify for the audience. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 the the information we had about surrogacy at that time was baby M. Mary Beth Whitehead fighting over keeping the baby. That I, I can't do which one was which, which. Two women who look very much alike. Um, one was the was the adoptive mom. What we call the adopted mom. Mom was the uh, gestational mom, and uh, there was a fight over that baby. And um, I had I went through a number of years of infertility treatments and and in vitro. And uh, finally, my doctor said, "You know what? Move on. We want you to have a baby." You know this. This you know this system is not working for you, um, and which doesn't mean that it doesn't work for a lot of people. Uh, but but it did not work for me. And um, 
when uh, when Robin, my surrogate mom, uh, uh, got pregnant successfully and and delivered a beautiful baby, and you know I was right there with her, and and she spent a lot of time with the house with us. I mean, we really we really bonded deeply. Uh, she and and I and her children and our family, um, and just thought, you know what, we we've, we've done this on such a high level um, uh, of trust, and and I have a a very strong belief in women helping women and supporting women and being there for their for their uh, women friends, and uh, and a woman I. <sighs> had never met handing me my child, so I'm a believer. Um, and we discussed it and um, I thought, you know what, this needs to be told. We need to share the story and um, uh, about what a, what a blessed event this is for two women and families to share. And um, uh, NBC came and said, we'd like to do the movie. Uh, we said, I think that's a good idea. Uh, they gave us a writer and she wrote a script that I, uh, that I refused and um, said, uh, you can take this movie somewhere else, but you can't put my name on it because this is not my experience. And uh, so we, we let that go away. And I had a call from ABC saying, we understand that you've turned down the NBC script. Um, we'd like you to do it any way you want to do it in your own words, anybody you choose, complete control. Um, and so, uh, uh, Steve and I said, you know what? Yeah, I think the story should be out there and people should know what a blessing this is for people. And so, uh, uh, Steve, uh, uh, my husband at the time wrote the script. Um, I helped, um, uh, I, Stan Margulies and I executive produced together, um, and, and David, who was, uh, must have been uh, probably three and a half at the time, uh, was there on the set all the time. In fact, uh, the actress that, that played Robin, uh, um, we had a, a, a scene in the hallway where I talk about, <sighs> doesn't matter, I can't do that monologue again. Uh, looking at the cradle and, and hoping to see your, you know, your, your, your mother's eyes or your grandmother's hands. And uh, during that scene between the two of us, David literally was standing between us for the close-ups. I mean, it was just, just the, the, the crew loved him. He loved being there. He didn't understand it, but it was just the best, best time. It is, it is a, a miracle and it brings. It's a miracle. It, Women it, it, helping it, with him. Well, do, do, do not never discount that. Well, and there's a, uh, a, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to put that up there, but there's a fan watching right now. Mary, Mar baby J and M. She said, I donated egg cells to an infertile couple. I only know it's a girl and she was born in 2013. There it is. Yeah, it there really, it it, it's an amazing gift. All of these women give an amazing gift. Um, David and Tully, yeah. born through surrogacy. How are they today? Um, They're brilliant. They're brilliant. Did they follow in mom's footsteps at all? No. No, David had done some production. He likes live production, um, uh, but no, no, they didn't. They didn't get that bug. So uh, uh, it doesn't break my heart. But they're, <laughs> but they're lovely human beings. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of who they are. And, and I was telling a story about uh, about Tully the other day, where several years ago I was at my mailbox and there's a bakery next door, and I said, "Why don't you go get us a, a couple of things?" And I came back and it was a the, it was a big bill. And I said, what, what did you spend the money on? And uh, he said, oh, there was a homeless guy that, that um, I wanted to get some food for. I said, oh, how did you do that? And he said, um, I brought him into the store and said, pick whatever you want. It's on me. Uh, well, you, 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 did, you did right, Ms. Hall. Yeah. <laughs> you did right. Yeah. You did I'm so right. proud of them. I'm so proud of both of them. They they really are amazing human beings. And, and I'm so glad you shared that here because you know that kind of kindness, you, you know, just the, that's a little thing. You know, we're all we all walk through a coffee shop or a little bodega or a deli, and you know, if there's an opportunity, we can all make somebody's day. Yeah. 
Kindness. Kindness. They both own kindness. Well, you raised them right. It has been such a pleasure speaking with you today. The fans have loved seeing you. Um, the comments, they, they adore you and they just thank you for joining us. Alan, it's been an absolute pleasure to kind of go down memory lane with you and, and uh, call up some of those long <laughs> forgotten moments. And obviously everybody knows they've got an Instagram account and, and a Facebook account, so you can find us there. But uh, Absolutely. thanks for and, doing and, this. I, I, I and need to remind them how tough this was to get done. <laughs> so, we, we got it together. Teamwork. Teamwork. You have a lovely weekend. Thanks, Alan. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I want to thank Deirdre Hall for spending this hour with us. Don't forget that Days of Our Lives streams on Peacock. I want to thank you all for the love and support this week as we celebrated the Locker Room's fourth anniversary. Don't forget to check out the merchandise at thelockerroom.com. There's a 20% discount if anybody wants anything. The code is the locker room, the number four, all one word. Please join us next week for an As the World Turns week here in the locker room when As the World Turns alum Brooke Alexander joins us on Wednesday uh, the 10th and on Friday, April 12th, executive producer Lawrence Queso joins us. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And if you like audio versions, just search the locker room on your favorite streaming platform. Thank you again, everybody. Have a great weekend. As always, please stay safe.